I dream of a world where we no longer have to pretend to be a certain way in order to be accepted. Thank you for having me. I love virtual rooms like this because when I thought it was game over for me, when I thought I had failed, when I was down, it was virtual rooms like this that encouraged me to stand back up. I am so grateful to be a part of this conversation with speakers who are contributing amazing ideas to help or even inspire those of you who find yourselves at a crossroad. I was 11 years old and I remember the first time that I felt excluded. A moment when I felt like it was not okay to be me. Growing up in Mozambique, I considered myself very fortunate to be given the opportunity to attend a private English speaking school. And it was a great school. My teachers, my classmates, and the staff felt like one big happy family. But there were days when I didn't quite feel like I belonged there. You see, I was that skinny kid who didn't wear the latest fashion, didn't travel on every holiday, nor watch cable television like the other kids. Yet, I was going to school with all these well-dressed and multilingual kids, and for a few hours a day, we got to be in the same classroom, even though our lifestyles were worlds apart. I was that odd, smart little girl who loved to study because my books made me feel understood. My books never asked me difficult questions like, where my family was planning to go on holiday next term, or what I thought about the latest Disney series. My schoolmates, on the other hand, assumed that I had cable TV at home, and they also assumed that I watched Disney Channel and Nickelodeon. So, when I told them that I didn't watch any of those series, they had no patience and no interest to tell me all about it. Just like that, I was excluded. The trouble was I worked really, really hard to be liked by everyone around me in order to be friends with the cool girls and accepted by the sporty guys. At 11 years old, I felt like it was not okay to be me. I tried to gain some weight to stop being the skinniest kid in class. I tried to change my hairstyle. I tried to upgrade my wardrobe. I even started reading magazines about the TV shows that the other kids like to watch in an attempt to fit in. Because I was afraid of missing out, of not being invited to the birthday parties, not being a part of the dance performances, and having no one to share a meal with or to hang out with after school if I continued to be that nerdy kid. I was at a crossroad, having to choose between staying true to who I was or becoming that kid that would fit in better. I couldn't make up my mind, so I chose both. Terrible idea. Because during the day, I tried to look cooler, but as soon as I arrived home, I took all that facade off and went running back to my books. I went as far as staying after school to hang out with the cool kids the day before a test just to prove to them that I was as cool as they were. But those cool afternoons often cost me some sleep. I would stay up all night studying for all that I didn't read in the afternoon because secretly the studious person in me was alive and well. Well hidden, that is. I share the story with you because when I was 11, I was trying too hard to fit in. I was living a double life, disconnecting and reconnecting to my true identity, and it was exhausting. But for a brief moment, that was all I knew. 
And at one point, being included became more important than being myself. But I can tell you from experience that nobody can sustain the double life forever. At one point, the weight of disconnecting to my true identity became heavier and harder to bear than my desire to be liked and accepted by others. So I had to choose. What do you do when you realize that you're not staying true to yourself? What do you do when you realize that you've been trying too hard to fit in? What do you do when you find yourself at a crossroad and you need to choose a path? What could I do? I had to peel off the layers that were covering who I truly was. And as I began to peel off those layers, I felt some relief. As the layers began to show, not everyone was happy about it, but that didn't bother me. I continued to search for myself because underneath those layers, I was searching for the me that was truly me, not the me that was perfect for others. If you can take away one key lesson from that 11-year-old girl, that lesson would be this. You need to peel off the layers that are covering who you truly are because the truest version of ourselves lives somewhere within us. Some of our past choices may have caused us to put different types of wallpapers on top of ourselves to please the eyes of people around us so that we can be more acceptable. And as the years go by, we end up putting so many different types of wallpapers on ourselves in order to keep up with everyone's latest expectations, only to find out that in the process of adding all those wallpapers, we have forgotten what our bare wall looks like. Now, let me be clear. When you make the decision to take the journey back to yourself, you'll discover that there isn't just one layer to peel. There are many layers. And here's the thing. Not everyone will like your raw and unpolished view, but it's important for you to see that raw and unpolished version of yourself whenever you find yourself at a crossroad. To find your place in this world, you need to meet the rawest and purest version of yourself and see its beauty as well as its power and be okay with it. Choosing the right path to take at a crossroad starts with you knowing, loving, and accepting yourself first. Because if you don't know who you are, how can you have the confidence to choose your own path? A path that honors who you are and what you believe in. To this day, even after living in Mozambique, Canada, and England, I still carry the lessons of that 11-year-old with me. Being yourself is totally worth it. A few days ago, I was humbled to receive an invitation on my inbox coming all the way from beautiful India to speak at TEDx. And here I am. Sometimes we get so hooked up on how others will perceive us that we don't take a leap and we miss out on the magic. We think everyone out there is smarter and better than us, but in fact, we're all unique and we all have our own unique path to walk on. We're all humans, after all, right? And sometimes we forget how strong we are to walk our chosen path. Haven't you noticed how sometimes we make a decision, we push through the crossroad, we choose a path, and all of a sudden we forget how strong we are to continue walking our chosen path? It's really funny I say this because... My first day at the University of Cambridge, I remember calling up my parents. And my dad was like, so how was day one? Good. It's hard here, but still good. Then a week later, I called up my mom and I said, mom, I'm exhausted. 
no one here gets my vision. I'll drop out of Cambridge. She said, drop out? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, mom, but I think I want to drop out of Cambridge. My mother usually starts every sentence with my daughter. And what I heard next are words that I hold on to. Words that I keep really close to my heart whenever my mind starts to think that my chosen path is too difficult to pursue. My daughter, your great grandmother did not go to school. Your grandmother did not go to school either. In order for me to go to school, I walked 10 kilometers one way just to get to school. And many times I wanted to stop under that hot African sun, but I didn't. I could only afford to go to school until grade six. And on my last day of school, I promised myself that if one day I had a daughter, I would do everything I could so that she could go to school. My daughter, every school you've been accepted to, accepted you because you earned your place there. Please always remember that you have everything it takes to walk your chosen path. And today, I want to leave you with these words. You have everything it takes to be your best. You see, when you feel like you're at a crossroad or no one gets your vision or you feel like you don't belong somewhere, be it at school, at work, or your community. Take a moment to see just how far you've come. Take a moment to reconnect to who you truly are. Choose a path that honors who you are and what you believe in. Then remind yourself that you have everything it takes to be your best. Today, I feel like the luckiest woman in the world because I get to be myself and still speak to amazing people like you. And as I help students, graduates, and young professionals in different parts of the world choose a path that is in line with who they are and what they believe in, I want you to choose your path in this world too. I showed up for you. I came for you. Just to tell you this, you have the strength to choose and create your own path. Whenever you're at a crossroad, just tap into that strength. Stay true to yourself and believe in your strength. Believe me when I say this, you have everything it takes to be your best. Now, my question is, are you willing to walk your chosen path?